So far in the RNN series, we have looked at RNN model and LSTM model and how they work. We have seen that the input to this model is text, which is sequence of words. But computer only deals with numbers. They do not understand words. So how do we pass text as an input? Also, can a computer understand the relationship between words just like how we human can? For example, can computer know that the words apple and orange are related to each other as they both are fruits? We will answer these questions in this video. I am Jay Patel and if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing because I upload easy to understand machine learning videos. Without further ado, let's get started with this video. To use words in our model, we have to convert these words into numbers. One technique that we can use is that we can use a vocabulary of words. Let's say we have a vocabulary of size 10,000 words. Here, every word will be converted into a number and that number will be the position at which that word appears. Let's say the word the appears at a position 8989 and the word king, let's say, appears at a position 3456. And similarly, the word is and the royal then this sentence can be converted into a vector with these values. But we cannot use this vector directly in our, to our model. We have to convert them into one-hot encoding form. One-hot encoding means that this number will be converted into a vector and the size of this vector will be 10,000. And all the values in this vector will be zero except the value at the position 8989. Similarly, the word king will be converted into a one-hot vector, which is the vector of size 10,000. And all the values in this vector are zero except the value at the position 3, 4, 5, 6. Similarly, the other words in the sentence will also be converted into a one-hot vector. Now, this kind of representation is called one-hot encoding representation. And instead of text, we can use this as our input to the model. But this representation has some limitation. Limitation one is that there is no relationship between words. It means that it does not tell if the two words are related. Let's understand this with the help of an example. Let's say we are creating a grammar checker and we have this sentence, she is a king of the country. Now clearly this is grammatically incorrect because we should have he here. Let us assume that our model is trained properly and it can correct such grammatical errors. But let us also assume that the model has never seen the word prince, which means that while training the model, the data set that we used has no occurrence of the word prince. In that case, as our model has never seen this word, it will be unable to detect whether the prince is a male or a female, whether there should be he or she at this place. Now, even though that we know that the words King and Prince are related because both of them are royal and both of them are male, but computer does not know that. So I'm repeating it again. If the model has never seen the word Prince, it will be unable to detect whether there should be he or she. Because this kind of representation does not tell any relationship between these two words. We cannot say that the two words are related if they appear at a closer position in a dictionary. because the nearby words can be word A and Aaron, which are not related to each other. Another limitation is that it is computationally inefficient because every word is of the size 10,000. Thus, this sentence consisting of four words will be a matrix of size 4, 10,000, which is a huge matrix. And let's say our vocabulary is of size 100,000 instead of 10,000, then this vector will be of size 4, 100,000, which is really large. So is there any way we can overcome these two limitations? Or is there any way our computer can understand the relationship between words? For example, if I have words such as orange and apple, can our computer know that these two words are related because they both are fruits? Well, that's where the word embedding come into picture. With a very simple technique, we can make computer realize that the words are similar in some context. Imagine that we have features associated with every word like gender, age, size, weight, etc. And the values of these features for every word is given in the form of this vector. 
So if we represent words in this form, then the computer can know that the words apple and orange are closely related to each other because the vector values for both these words are very close to each other. You can see that these are almost close to zero. This is these are both 0.1 and 0.05 and so on. Similarly, the value of the word king and prince are also closely related to each other, while the values of the word king and orange are quite different. For example, here we have value close to 1, while this is 0. This is 0.75, this is 0.1, this is 0.8, this is almost close to 0. Thus, the, the values of the word king and orange are quite different. Thus, the computer or a machine can understand that the words king and orange are not related to each other while the words apple and orange are related to each other. Another thing that you can see is that the gender value of king and queen is almost opposite while the gender value of king and men is quite close to each other because both of them are male. Thus, the machine can understand that the word king and prince are related to each other because they both are royal and they both are male. And similarly, uh, the king is not a food while apple and orange are food and thus their values are opposite to each other. And this way, the machine can realize the context of the words and the relationship between the words. Just like how humans can understand the context and the relationship between the words. Now, this featureized representation of words is called word embedding. So, instead of using the one hot representation we saw earlier, we can use this featureized vector representation which are word embeddings. And this way, computer can better understand the context of the words. Another cool thing that we can do is that we can also find the analogies. For example, if we tell the model that man is to woman, then king is to what? Then our model will tell that the king is to queen. Now, isn't it magical? Now, let's see how this can be done. If you subtract the vector king with the men and adding the vector of woman, then the resultant vector that you obtain can be given by this. Now, if you compare this vector with all the words that are there in the vocabulary, then you will see that this vector is closely related to queen. And thus, by comparing the similarity of this vector with all the words in the vocabulary, we can obtain the answer as queen. Not just this, another analogy can be if Delhi is to India, then Washington is to what? Then our model will say that the Washington is to America because Delhi is the capital of India and Washington is the capital of America. Now with the help of word embedding, all this is possible. And the model can predict such kind of analogies. Now if you project these vectors into two-dimensional plane, then you might see something like this. Here you can see that these words are clustered at this region while these words which are the words of the animals are clustered at this region while the words of the fruits are clustered at this region. Which means that the similar words are related and closer to each other. Now the question arises, do we manually need to assign values to all the features for all the words in our vocabulary? The answer is no. We can use models that can automatically create word embeddings for all the words in our vocabulary. We can use word embedding of any size. For example, for every word, we can have let's say 200 number of features or 300 number of features. Now, this was just an example where I named the features like age, gender, size, etc. The features are not given any names, but they are created with the help of models. Now, in those word embeddings, even though the features are not named, it uh, the computer can understand the contextual meaning behind the words and we can also find the relationship between the words. There are techniques that can learn association between the words and automatically assign appropriate value to each feature. And there are two such techniques to do the same. One of them is word to vec and other is glove. In the next video, we will see how we can train word embedding via word to vec model. So you can click somewhere on the left or right side of this video to go to the next video. And I'm sure that the next video will be very interesting because it will tell you how these word embeddings are created. And after we have learned that, we will use word embeddings into our 
application and we will code that in python so i am very excited to see you all in the next video until then have a great learning